Hi, Jeff Spira here again. Uh, today I want to talk to you about fasteners used for boats. Um, the modern uh, plywood covered framed hulls like I design and, and others as well uh, are a little bit different than the old traditional uh, wooden boats that were built. Uh, the, the, you know, Carvel planked uh, framed hulls, bent framed hulls, um, used a different sort of fastening method. You know, those hulls were a bunch of loose pieces all sailing together, um, you know, loosely held together with, uh, with fasteners. Whereas my hulls and, and uh, a lot of the mo more modern designs are a single unitized structure. So the, the, the whole purpose of the fasteners is a little bit different between the two. In the old days, they said those um, uh, wooden Chris Craft hulls used 100 screws per inch of boat length. So a 20 footer would be, what is that? 288 inches times 100 screws is, that's you know almost 30,000 screws holding it together. Um, you won't need anywhere near that many uh, in, in a hull like mine. Uh, really the only purpose that the screws have in a, in a hull like mine is, is to hold the uh, framing together and the, uh, and the plywood on. Um, while the glue dries, it's really a bonded structure and there's really no need to have, uh, the kind of, um, you know, uh, structural strength in the fasteners that's required to hold it together while the boat's being used. They're just, uh, you leave them in because it would be, um, difficult to pull them out and then refill the holes, but Theoretically, you could pull all the screws out and, uh, and, and put in wood plugs or, or you know, uh, filler plugs inside the holes uh, to stop the, the uh, water from getting in there um, and, uh, and actually have no fasteners once the hull was complete. So, you know, the, 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 the intent of using the screws is very different in the two types of hulls. Now, the original um, hulls that uh, I designed used, used bolts to hold the frames together. And this was kind of uh, normal at the time. Um, I think uh, the Carolinian was one of the first boats I built that was my design. Well, that's not true. I built a lot of Piros and, and uh, you know, uh, John boats and things like that uh, and other people's designs before that. But... This boat was, was probably um, originally designed by me as the one I have for sale now in the 1980s. And, um, and I, you know, looked at some of the other people that had boats like that, including, um, I think I bought a set of plans from Captain Jim Oral down in the Texas Dory plans. And I, I really liked his boats. And so I kind of used some of his concepts along with my um, structural engineering to, uh, to adapt the first hulls that way. In any event, they bolted the frames together. Um, and that's what I first did, and, I, and that's what my plans originally called for. But uh, nowadays I say um, just, use, uh, just use screws because really the glue is what holds the whole works together. And, you know, I'll, I'll demonstrate that and show you what that means in a little bit. So... Um, so anyway, the, uh, um, now I would recommend that you use screws to hold the, uh, the glued joints together. And the only reason that, this, that the, the um, fastener needs to be in there, like I said, is to, uh, is to make sure the glue dries and it's all held together correctly. So, uh, so it really doesn't matter, for instance, if the uh, structural strength of the, of the bonded or the glued joint, um, the, really the, the bolted joint or the fastened joint, let's put it that way. It doesn't matter if the structural strength of the fasteners reduces or not. So, um, whereas uh, in a traditional wooden boat, you'd want, you need the strength of the fastener as the boat's being used, but in mine, it's not a, it's not a big deal. So, um, that's why I, I, uh, 
usually recommend a different kind of fastener than than many other boats and and even different materials and and I'll get into that detail as well so <clears throat> you need to um, um, consider that when you're selecting a boat as to what kind of fasteners you you need and how much they cost and things like that if you were if you were to build a you know a, a seagoing basically wooden hull design for instance you you would probably want to use um, bronze fasteners because uh, they're the best ones in the ocean but in my hulls um, you can get by with other materials and and I'll, I'll get into the material end of things pretty soon so um, the first thing I want to talk about though is the type of fasteners you use now traditional wood screws um, uh, here's a photograph of one. Uh, you you are, are fatter in diameter, and the threading doesn't go all the way up the, the length of the screw. Um, this means that you have to pre-drill the holes, and you use a special type of drill that has a stepped uh, diameter to in order to, you know, before you have you can put the screw in. You can't simply drive it in. Uh, there's another type of screw, though, that I recommend on my designs, and it's a very popular way to do it, and they're called uh, deck screws. Now, deck screws, you can see, are narrower uh, in the shaft than uh, traditional wood screws. So you can drive them right in, and, uh, and they'll hold up much better, than, uh, than and, and they won't split the wood out. Um, now, I, I, t I would typically pre-drill these, though, with a small hole so that it goes in straight and you don't have any issues um, running them in with an electric screwdriver. You know, these modern sort of electric screwdrivers and dr drill drivers that you buy now uh, that are available are, are fairly high power, and they're, they were very unusual um, a long time ago when I was a, when I was a kid and, and, uh, and into my adulthood, uh, there was no such thing as, a, as an electric drill driver. There were some pneumatic um, automated uh, drill, uh, uh, you know, drivers, but um, typically a home builder had to screw the screws in himself. So what a lot of builders did was just pound the screws in uh, using a hammer, didn't, didn't turn them. Um, an alternate was a Yankee screwdriver. I don't know if you've seen those, but but trying to put all those screws into a into a wooden hull that you uh, make in your garage typically required you twisting uh, with a hand, you know, uh, screwdriver <laughs> all those screws in. Uh, again, you could use the you could you could push on them using the uh, um, the the Yankee type screwdriver, or what a lot of people did was uh, was use a, a brace and bit and then just use the uh, the brace to carry a screw bit and, uh, um, you know, drive it in place. But nowadays with the electric uh, drill drivers, you just, you just push on them and, uh, hit the button and they drive right in. It's, it's great for boat builders. So that ought to be the way to go for it. Let's go <clears throat> into my shop. I'm, I'll take you downstairs and, uh, uh, and we'll go into my my boat building shop and we'll drive a few screws uh, using these different uh, methods that I'm talking about and you can kind of see what I'm talking about as they go in. So come on with me downstairs. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the, uh, the one by three I've got um, and this is the traditional wood screw. I'm going to just give it a shot on this end and just see if it will drive in without splitting the wood. Uh, again, it's a, it's a Phillips drive, so it may or may not go in straight. I don't know. But let's, let's give it a try. Uh, that didn't work where the dam. <laughs> that just goes to show you that uh, uh, you need you need to do something. So I'm going to pre-drill this hole. 
I'm going to swap the drill driver out for this uh, starter here and then we'll run it through. So. Oh, you can, okay, you can see here I've I've created a, created a our starter hole for it. Now we're going to run it in. There we go. Now that's a per perfectly adequate joint for for anything that uh, uh, any of my boats, because you're actually going to bond the two surfaces together with a glue, whether you use a polyurethane glue or whether you use a, an epoxy glue. I'm, I'm going to do that in another video. I'm going to explain how all that works for you but that's not today so okay now the other nice thing is about working with screws is you can take them out. should be able to take them out well <laughs> no can't take it out <laughs> okay <laughs> that's another uh, another issue about using uh, uh, Phillips heads. So let's try one of these deck screws next to it. So I'm just, I'm not going to pre drill it. I'm just going to put the deck screw on. Oh, going backwards. That went in so much easier, so much faster. It did stick out a little bit on the end, but that was so much easier to do. It was unbelievable. So that's that's uh, why you want to use deck screws on these. Put another one up here, just for fun. A little bit more. There we go. Um, these go in so smoothly and so easily. Again, these are the inch and, a, inch and a half, so they go all the way through these two layers of, I uh, guess you can't see, these two layers of material here. The other thing that's nice about the, this spline drive is they pull out so easily. And that's one thing the Phillips screw did not do. It didn't pull out, so I guess I'm going to have to futz around with it a little bit to get it to come out. <laughs> there we go. And there's your, uh, your, your classic wood screw. Uh, I'm assuming I can get it out. Probably takes a hammer to do it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I can get, I could get it out, but I'm not gonna bother you guys on the uh, video. So, anyway, that's that's the secret to deck screws, and uh, and that's why I recommend them. Now let's talk about materials. As I mentioned earlier, um, bronze uh, is a is a probably the best material you can choose, but that is typically for um, for boats used in salt water that are left in the water all the time. So they're, they're exposed to salt water full time. Um, it's adic it's, you know, the, probably the best choice, but they're quite expensive. And there, there are no, um, there are no, uh, deck screws available in bronze right at this time. Um, all you can get them in there's, there's three ways you can get them. You can get them in galvanized, which is, zinc coated and um, you can get them in uh, a polymer coating and you can get them uh, in stainless steel. Now it may surprise you but I would absolutely recommend using stainless steel if you're going to be using the boat in salt water. I know some of you are thinking well you know stainless steel um, if it's in the absence of oxygen can um, can corrode if it's sealed off from oxygen. 
And yeah, it probably can in some instances. But remember what I said, my hulls don't require any structural strength out of the, uh, out of the screws for the long term. It's only there to, uh, to fill up space once the, the glue is cured. So, um, so using a stainless steel screw, even if it weakened over time, over years, would not make a big, uh, a big difference. Now, if I were using, um, if I were going to use my boat in primarily fresh water, um, I would, I would actually use um, these polymer coated uh, screws. They're guaranteed not to rust, if you notice, and that's for. Um, if you use them outdoors on, on fences or, or things like that. So um, that's a good, that would be a very good choice for a hull that you would keep on a trailer, um, use for a day or two at a time, or a week even, and then pull out and then store uh, under cover and you know, keep the rainwater out, that sort of thing. Uh, I would go with that, with that uh, uh, polymer coating. Again, it's, it's inexpensive and it's a new newer coating that you don't hear much about. Now the other choice of course is is uh, galvanized and and galvanized is um, it's really a zinc coating over over steel screw. Now I, I've been using galvanized nails um, on uh, you know traditional you know Carvel planked uh, boats for years and years, and they last well, even in the ocean, for quite some time. Um, it, uh, it saves the, uh, the screw from ionic uh, corrosion. You've probably heard of people putting zincs on boats. Um, well, the zinc is really a sacrificial anode um, that protects the steel, the zinc plates onto the steel, um, as opposed to the steel uh, corroding away. So. It's a, it's, a, it's a preferred method, and, and you can certainly use those, and they're, you know, they're available um, in, you know, in Home Depot or wherever, you, or Amazon.com, wherever you like. Um, but if you're, gonna, if you're going to build a boat and you want, it, you want a good life uh, for it, um, I would use the stainless steel. I've left some links below in the, uh, in the description section that will... Uh, um, that will uh, sh give you some Amazon.com uh, places to buy this. You know the type of screws that I'm talking about. Um, I'm, I've got a, I've got them in uh, stainless and in uh, uh, the polymer coated and uh, in galvanized as well. So um, you can look at those and decide. Uh, you know which you'd like to build. So using so. Um, in any event, um, that's the way I look at it uh, for, for the boats I use, uh, that I design, and uh, uh, recommend that you use. And the guys that have uh, done that and follow those rules, you know, they, they use their boats for years and years, and it, they stay hold up extremely well, and no one, no one has complained so far. So um, I, uh, that's, that's the way I'd go. <laughs> The choice is yours, though. I mean, it's your boat, so you get to decide. So. Well, um, if you like this uh, video, again, please subscribe if you have not already. And hit the bell uh, to make sure you um, um, get notifications of when I put new, new videos up. And also, um, uh, share this with your friends. You know, I'd love to build up the, the viewership of this if you, if you can, if you uh, like. Share it on your friends' posts who are building a boat. And, um, and I'm going to come back in future uh, uh, versions of this Yes, You Can Build a Boat blog and talk about, you know, glues and wood, and, you know, to use and plywood. And, and you know, again, I, I hit one uh, that talked about tools. I've got three or four more about tools that that I want to do. So so pay attention, and they'll, they'll, I'm going to try and do as many as I can in here in the next few months. And hopefully, you'll be ready to start building your boat in the spring. So anyway, thank you again for watching, and talk to you again soon.